welcome back today's topic is electrostatic potential in the last video lectures we have seen the gauss law the statement of gauss law the explanation and how it can be employed for determining the electrostatic fields in today's class we will see the electrostatic potential concepts and how to determine the electrostatic potential due to different configurations of electrostatic charges first of all coming to the definition of electric potential electric potential is defined as the work or energy which is required per unit charge to move that test charge against a field from a reference point in simple terms let us suppose there is a charge the charge q is there and it is and it is lying at this point let us suppose o and the electric field which is emanating from this charge assuming that it is in radial direction it is radial upwards direction now let us suppose this field will be extending up to infinity okay now let us suppose in this electric field let us if i take a unit positive charge plus 1 coulomb if i try to move this if i place the charge here automatically what happens it will experience a force right because of this charge there will be a force now at this point automatically what happens there is some other force this is p1 this is p2 at these two points if i place a charge the forces will be different so now if i take a single charge and move it from p1 to p2 against the direction of the field then you need some amount of energy right so the amount of energy which is required to move a charge unit test charge e square plus potential electrostatic potential now understand what is the definition of electrostatic potential the amount of energy which is required in order to move a unit charge against the electric field let us suppose if i am moving it from infinity to this particular point let us suppose point p then it is called as electrostatic potential of this particular point p1 let us suppose if i am moving from p1 to p2 then the energy which is required to move from p1 to p2 is called as potential difference between the points p1 and p2 now so what is the formula for v So what is the formula of uh, V? V is equal to energy or work done by Q. Okay. Now we all know that in our kinematics we might have studied that work done is always equal to force into displacement, right? So I can write this one as force into displacement by charge. and uh, we know that the force on a particular charge is given by q into e this is what we have studied in our previous lectures force on any charge is given by the magnitude of the charge and the electric field acting upon it so i will replace this one this so v is equal to w by q where w is now f p f is again i can replace it with q e now if i cancel q and q you will get e d so this is a simple expression of determining the electrostatic potential if you know the electrostatic fields okay now potential difference what is the concept of potential difference so far we have gone through potential so as i already said there is a charge and you are moving a unit charge from infinity to a point then it is called as potential if you are moving between two points p1 to p2 then it is called as potential difference between the two points so it means that if one point is infinity it is called as potential if those are two points are finite it is called as potential difference between the two points now i am considering a positive charge q which is situated at a point o now this is 
Q at a point O. Let the field be produced by Q is a non-uniform radial field around it. Uh, I'll take some dotted lines. Okay. Some way of dotted lines like this. Okay. Let there be two points P1 and P2 which are at uh, x is equal to x1 and uh, x is equal to x2. Now the work done per unit positive charge from P2 to P1 is given by, see this is the distance mode, right? So V21, the voltage difference between 2 to 1 is given by integral of x2 to x1 dv, where dv is nothing but we know that. V is equal to int, so dv is nothing but assuming the field is constant in this region, it is this one, okay? So this is the equation. Since the work is done against the electric field, because the field is like that, you are moving the charge in this way. That's why I have mentioned minus E into dx. This is the expression in case of a non-uniform uh, field. Now, so that's what I have said. The negative symbol is employed to indicate that the charge is moved against the direction of the electrostatic field. We know that the equation for E is Q by 4 pi epsilon R square if it is due to a point charge, right? Now, I will try to employ this equation now. See, what is V21? I have got V21 as minus integral x2 to x1 E dot dx, right? So, E I am replacing it with Q by 4 pi epsilon R square. So, in this one, this is constant, this is constant. So, I will remove this one here. Minus Q by 4 pi epsilon integral x1 to x2, 1 by x square. So, this is 1 by x square dx. So, what is the integral of 1 by x square? It is minus 1 by x, right? So, that's why what I will get. This is equal to minus Q by 4 pi epsilon minus 1 by x at the condition that x is equal to x2 to x is equal to x1. So, what I will get? Q by 4 pi epsilon. 1 by x2 minus x1. If I do it in the reverse way, then I will get x1 minus x2. This is the expression for potential difference between two points. Now, let us suppose if the point 2 is infinity. We know that, uh, yeah. So the second point is at infinity, then the equation becomes V, sorry. It becomes V1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. I will get only X1 here because this will become 0. So, this is. So, in general, the potential at any point which is at a distance of R from a charge Q is given by V is equal to Q by 4 pi epsilon R. This is the expression for potential due to a charge at a distance of R. Now, what is the relation between E and V? We have already discussed that one. V21 is equal to integral of X2 to X1 minus e dot dx or v is equal to minus e dot dm. Let the length be in x direction or y direction or z direction, whatever it might be. This is the expression. Now, if we consider a closed loop, we know that, see, v is equal to integral e dot dl, right, over the entire length here. If we consider a closed loop, so v closed loop which means I am taking it as closed loop. Okay, this is minus. Okay. See, voltage across closed loop by Kirchhoff's loss, it is equal to zero, right? So, which means that over a closed loop, E dot DL will become zero. So, if you apply Stokes theorem, you know that Stokes theorem is very simple. Uh, line integral of normal component of any vector is equal to curl of that vector over a surface. So, this is now convert it to this one, which means that this is 0, so automatically this is also 0. Since the surface integral cannot be 0, I can take that this is 0. So, curl of E is equal to 0. In the earlier case, we have done divergence of E is equal to Q by epsilon. That we have talked as uh, Maxwell's first equation. Now, this is the second equation. First equation was, right? Now, second equation is this one. These are the two equations of Maxwell's. Maxwell's first equation and second equation. Now, having learned these problems, we will uh, try to solve a few problems on uh, how to determine electrostatic potential due to point charges. Now, you see the first question. 
A uniform electric field is there which is directed along the positive x axis and its magnitude is 30 volts per meter. This is E. What is the potential difference between the two points P1 and P2 on the x axis which are at 5 centimeters and 20 centimeters respectively from the origin? So, which means that there is a assuming that okay, point 0.1 is at 5 centimeters, right? So, I will take it as 5, 0, 0, it is also on x axis and P2 is at 20, 0, 0, okay. Now, the electric field is also on the x axis, but electric field is given as 30 volts per meter, right? So, uh, since it is a vector, I will take it as 30 i, it is on the x axis, right? So, since all are on x axis, ignoring the directions because everything is on x axis, I can directly take what is the distance between these two points? It is 15, right? 15 centimeters, which means I can directly take it as 0.15 meters. So, I can directly take the equation V is equal to E into D because everything is on only a single plane, everything is uniform. So, the E value is 30 and uh, the distance is 0.15, multiply it, I will get 4.5. This is one simplest method how we can calculate electrostatic potential. Otherwise, if you want to go with the formula, what is the equation? V is equal to minus integral E dot dr. So, in this, the length is being varied along x axis only. So, I will take it as a E bar dot dx bar, right? dx bar into i bar. This is the dx into i bar. And uh, because differential length is this vector, right? We have already seen it. So, I am considering only, since it is only on the x direction, I am considering only this. E, I already know that it is 30i, right? So, what is 30i dot dx i bar? I will get 30 into dx. So, integral of, integral of 30 dx over the points 0 0.20 to 0 0.05. These are the two points, right? P1, it is at 0 0.05 comma 0 comma 0. I have converted it into meters, 0 0.20, 0, 0. So, this is the true way, 4.5 volts, if you want to apply integral method. Now, next question. Determine the potential difference between the points A and B, which are at a distance of, now see here, the direction has not been mentioned. It can be either this side, uh, let us suppose, Point 0.1 can be this side, point 0.2 can be this side or point 0.1 can be this side, point 0.2 can be this side. There is no proper mentioning of direction. So, what he has done is he has only mentioned that this is the distance between point 0.1 to this charge, this is the distance between point 0.2 to this charge. So, in that case, what is the best way of doing the things? I can rely upon this equation where x1 and x2 are the two points with at a distance of x1 and x2 from q. Okay. So, that is why Q, I know it is 2 into n to the power of minus 8, 4 pi epsilon, epsilon r, I have taken it as 1 since it is a. So, x1 is first point is 0 0.5, second point is 0 0.1 meters. So, this is the answer, minus 14.4, right. Now, moving ahead, the third problem now, we will move on to third problem, where calculate the potential at a point. This is the point due to point charges. There are three charges, two charges now. Those are at different locations. There are two points Q1, sorry, Q1 charge. This is Q2 charge, and I want at B. So, what I should do? I should do the superposition here. I will first calculate the potential from here, and I will calculate the potential from here. What is the potential from this point? It is Q1 by 4 pi epsilon naught x1. From here, it is Q2 by 4 pi epsilon x2. So, I will add these two. I know Q1, Q2 and I know X1, X2 as a shoot and I will get this value. This is the way how we are going to do uh, calculate electrostatic potentials if point charges are given. In the next video lecture, we will see how to compute potentials when we do have continuous charge distributions. Okay. Thank you. I hope that now you are able to determine the potentials when static charges are being given, point charges are being given. Thank you. And uh, Try to remember, we have discussed today Maxwell's second equation of electrostatic fields in differential and integral form.